Okay, hello there everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. So today I'm going to do something different than I had originally planned because of the volatility in the market today. I had a webinar prepared that I would normally do on a PowerPoint, but I decided today would be a good opportunity for those of you that are here and getting the benefit of talking to me this evening and hearing what I have to think of talking <laughs> about the market. And I'm going to relate what I do to what happened today in the market and my expectation or plan of action for tomorrow. So can everyone see the chart? So how many people in here are traders that you're actively trading, you traded the market today? Write it in the room. Who traded the market today? Who is actively trading? Say yes, say no. Mary said no, who else? Mary, the only one here. There's Greggy. Okay. Greggy watched it, didn't trade. Only two people in here have answers. Can everybody hear me? I'm trying to get an idea here who trades and who has never traded in their life. Gustav, I, Gustavo, I see you in here. Did you trade today? Base of X says no. Mark said he did. <coughs> KN is typing and did not trade. Okay. All right. So I'll tell you the trades I called here today. On the options newsletter, I called Facebook puts, which worked. Facebook dropped, fell, boom. Had a nice move down. And I also called, there were two shorts today, AA. American Airlines, which was a nice short that dropped. In fact, let me just take this off here really quickly. This was the morning day trade. I'm squishing this, but I called this here, dropped, fell, boom. Nice move in the AAL. Target was 25, and that is exactly, I mean exactly where it went. Okay, so two shorts today, one day trade short and one put, which was the Facebook. But that's it. That's all that I called. So what I do is I get up in the morning and I go through a rating system. It's a system that you learn if you came and wanted to trade with me. You would learn a 26 point system that I go through myself personally. And if you learn it, you would do it too in the morning before you would take any day trades, before you would take any options trades. If the gap, let me actually just blow this up. What is a gap? Let's go over what a gap is first. Market gap down today. A gap is the difference between the open and the close. Close of the market on Friday was 333.48. Open of the market was 323.14. Market gap down. Market gap down 10 points or roughly thereabout in the SPY, okay? So what I do is I look for gaps and then I rate them in the pre-market. Now you can rate gaps in the post-market too. Shank Shack is down tonight. This is definitely, definitely a watch for tomorrow, but I don't know where this is going to open. It's a long way away till 930, but one watch for me tomorrow, which I will rate. I don't know how it's going to rate because I don't know where it's going to open. But one, one, one thing I will write tomorrow is Shake Shack, okay? It's down tonight on the earnings. So what do I do? I follow a system consistently which helps me make money in the market because I don't make decisions based on something like a virus, okay? So today the market fell overnight from Friday to Monday, okay, but we really didn't see a big sell-off today. In my opinion, this is a wait and see till tomorrow morning, and if we open up tomorrow morning, then this reaction was pretty much it, okay? So the reality is that when you're looking to trade and make money, if you can find volatility and spot volatility, you can make money. Today, there really wasn't any volatility on the live day in the market to trade. If you had shorted the market Friday night into Monday, yes, you would have made Monday. I did not do that. 
there would be no reason for me to have done that. It wouldn't have made any sense. You would have never been able to predict the fact that the market gapped down here today the way it did from Friday's close, okay? So I don't look at fundamentals at all. Now, if you like fundamentals and you want to do fundamentals, and that's something that you love to do, you can do that with technical analysis. But for me, reading price action and reading it live is very important. So I rated the gap in the market today, and guess what? It rated 19 points. What does that mean? 50-50 chance of working or failing. A 50-50 isn't good enough. So when I rate a gap, I look at 26 points. 20 points or more, you could take it in the direction of the gap. If it's under 20, 17, 18, 19, it only has a 50-50 chance of working or failing, and you got to watch it live. So we watched the market live, or I did, this morning in the room, and I knew right out of the gate that the market wasn't going to have the follow-through today lower. Now, again, I didn't buy this market here. I didn't buy this gap down here, but I didn't short it either. Here was the morning trading action. In fact, let's look at the entire first hour. Here's 10.30. That's 9.30 to 10.30. So we had intrinsic weakness coming in in the gap down, but no follow-through. No follow-through whatsoever here at all. In fact, we didn't even break the low of the day until noon. We didn't even break the low of the day until noon, and I'm squishing this here. This is a one-minute chart. I'm going to squish it, squish it, squish it to get the whole day in here if I can. Let's see if I can get the whole day in there. This basically closed neutral. If you want to be very, 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 very technical, you could say down, but this is the open and you see where we close. So technically speaking to me, this is basically neutral. Okay, support and resistance are areas. It doesn't have to be an exact penny. See this here? So this is pretty much what nowhere today in the live day, all right? So when one of the things I think people find so challenging in trading to make money, they find making money challenging. Why? A lot of people, why? Because they can't make up their mind what they want to do. And they're easily, easily, easily swayed to do one thing or the other. They can't stick on top of what they want to do, stay consistent, stay on top of something, and follow through with the consistency come hell or high water. So if you have everyone in the world saying the market's going to fall off a planet, if you don't think it is, then the consistency, meaning if your strategy tells you that it's not going to fall off a planet, then, then, then you wouldn't short. So you had, a, had and, and have here probably and had today on the day and maybe perhaps people even took positions here overnight to the downside, which would have been, again, a crapshoot, okay, based on the gap rating today and the trading action as well. If you don't have a consistency to what you do in your method and your strategy, then you are making decisions on the fly, basing decisions off of news reports, which never, never, never is the right thing to do, and then you're consequently losing because it's very difficult to be consistent with that. You're reacting on panic, which many people did today that shorted this market or sold out of this market. Again, I would have gone long here because right now there's no reason to go long. Why? Because we could possibly continue to fall, and if we do, I don't know where we land. But one thing's for sure, I won't know until tomorrow morning. But my system told me today that this market was a 50-50, and that on the live day, it had to go quick if it was going to fall off a planet. It didn't. And we did not fall off a planet today. And if you want to be really, 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 really technical, the open today of this market, let me find 9.30, was 3.23.14. And again, if you really, 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 really technical, the close was 3.22.54. So that's a roughly about a 50 cents body. What do I mean by body? Each of these bars here is a candlestick. This is the body. The body is the part that's filled out, the actual body, whether it's green or red. So the body today was a baby body, okay? So that is not a massive sell-off, a panicky sell-off, okay? Now, if we end up gapping down tomorrow, I will rate the market gap down to see if it will continue to sell off or not. If we gap up tomorrow, I will rate the market gap up to see if that's a gap up to buy or not. 
or if it's not going to hold, okay? So having a strategy, consistent strategy, and for me, it's the point rating system. I fill out a worksheet. I go through it. Boom, boom, boom. It helps me stay consistent and not to have to get crazy thinking about news or viruses or whatever the panic things that people are saying on TV. There's so much panic going on literally across the board in news things. And I know this because I was on two segments today um, on TV and radio where literally everyone seems to be thinking that this is, you know, panic, 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 panic. And so I think that you've got to be, if you want to trade, very, very focused, not just in a day like today, which some of you admitted that you didn't trade today. Maybe you didn't trade because you don't normally trade or you didn't like anything today or you just weren't sure what the direction here was. Um, but if you, if you don't know what to do on any given day, days like today can definitely be tricky and you don't want to take a loss on something unless you have 100% conviction it's going to work. And yet at the same point, you don't want to go long in here today if in fact this wasn't going to hold because we could have fallen today and we might fall tomorrow. I, I don't know. I don't know until I see it in the morning. Right now here tonight, we're just basically break even from the close and the spy. And I'm going to look at a couple other things here. We're basically break even here in the Dow. And let me look at the cues. Same thing, and Apple. Okay, so any questions here so far? So how do you make money trading consistently? Have a strategy. What do I mean? Does that mean buying support? No. Does it mean shorting resistance? No. Why? Because there's about one bazillion placements of support and resistance on any given chart. And right now we're looking at the SPY, which is an ETF for the S&P. So you can't just buy support as a strategy and you can't just short resistance as a strategy either. You can't do it even if you're getting the stock in the trend. You can't buy support in every stock in an uptrend and you can't short resistance in every stock that's in a downtrend. It doesn't consistently work. So I look to play momentum. I look to play momentum. How do I tell the momentum's gonna go up or down? Of which I do play both, okay? Sometimes I play long, sometimes I play shorts. But how do I know where the momentum is gonna go? Because I see it in the gap. I rate it in the gap. Again, this goes back to the structure and the foundation of having a strategy. I go through the worksheet. I rate the gap. I go through and tally up and total the points. If the points total over 20, it tells me this gap is gonna follow through. If we're gapping up, it's going to rally. If we're gapping down, it's going to fall. Here is an example of a stock that gapped up. This was stamped last week. Gapped up, rallied, followed through. Had a big, bigger move than I even expected. Stock closed here the night before. This was earnings at 95.46, open in the morning at 131.79. What's momentum? The stock rallied. Look at this. 30 points almost on the day. The stock rallied within a two-day period, 55 points. This is momentum. The momentum was to the upside. If you shorted this here to thinking it was going to fill the gap, you lost. And you lost big time, which is probably also what, what propelled this forward here the second day to this big number. But this is momentum. In this case here, it is bullish momentum. Okay. And when I look at the market, and again, I'm looking at the market here tonight, I don't see enough momentum to the downside right now this second at 444 p.m. on Monday, I don't see enough momentum to the downside to tell me, short the world, everything's going to collapse, okay? Any questions so far here so far today? So one of the things that I, I know, I know from having the stock swoosh business where I teach my method and I teach traders how to do the right things to make money, one of the things I know that is a critical error for traders is that they constantly, constantly, constantly change their mind about what they want to do. They don't have 100% conviction in anything. They change their mind on their sizing, how many shares they want to take per trade, how much risk they want to do. They change their minds on exits. They change their minds on if they're going to do a trade or like a trade or not. In other words, if they take a trade and it's down right away, they want to kill it. And then it, they flip it around and then it goes in the right direction they had were in the first place. And then they take it and kill it and take it again and kill it and take it again. Either you believe something is lower or you believe something is higher. There is no in-between, okay? And that's the way that I approach my method. That's the way I approach my rating system. That's the way I approach the calls when I give them. And that's the way that I approach trading in general, okay? Any questions here so far? 
Now, again, I just forgot what I was going to say. Um, when I look at everything in the market, I mean, just a ton of different stocks. Remember the stock, the, the market, I say the market, the, the, the SPY, the, the, which is the ETF for the S&P. When, when I, this is made up of stocks. The Dow has only 30 stocks in it. So I tend not to focus on that. I have to talk about it on TV, but I tend to focus on the S&P or the SPY ETF because there's more stocks in this than the QQQs or in the Dow, okay? So what is this made up of? It's made up of stocks. And if I look at stock after stock after stock after stock, okay, and I don't see things selling off, intrinsic weakness in things, the panic that everyone's been talking about on TV, but if I don't see it in the price action, that tells me something. That tells me that for now, we're not, we're not lower, okay? Any questions here so far? So, again, if you decide that you want to trade, which a lot of people like the idea of making money, but a lot of people don't like the idea of staying consistent with something because for some reason they really find that challenging. If what happens? If they take a trade and it loses. Sometimes I take trades and they lose, but more trades that I take win than lose. And the most difficult thing for people is to stick with something, to stick with it, stay on top of it, do the same thing day after day after day after day after day if one trade loses or two trades lose. They immediately want to jump ship and do something else. They immediately want to look at trading fundamentals. They immediately want to listen to the news. They immediately question themselves if they take a trade and it's down, okay? And you can't do that. I know you kind of have to step outside yourself and look at things intellectually in your mind and say, you know what? Is there anything here that I'm missing? What's going on? Am I being practical? Okay, about these decisions, about these choices. Because the worst thing that you can do is panic when you're in a position, particularly if you're in an overnight, like if you were in overnights from Friday to today, if you were in longs, or to panic maybe and just jump into shorts today, which would have been a panicky activity, in my opinion, to jump into just shorting everything in the market. Because if we gap up tomorrow and run, then all those shorts would be blown through. And we didn't have enough play through today in the market if you had taken a short position to have it be profitable enough that you would have exited it. Unless you did Facebook. Facebook had a nice drop. Facebook had a nice two, three dollar drop from where I called it. Okay. But anyways, getting back to this conviction, this conviction, conviction, conviction. This is something that you gotta have. It might you might even call it confidence. The confidence comes from knowing that you believe that you can trust yourself to make good decisions. You trust yourself to make good trading decisions. You don't question yourself. You don't question the strategy. You follow it to the letter. Make sense? It doesn't mean that you, you don't get upset maybe if a trade doesn't work. Nobody likes losing, but you understand that trading itself means that some trades will win and some will lose. More have to win than lose or you won't be profitable and therefore there's no point in doing this, but you can't change what you're doing and skip around and lose confidence and lose conviction if some trades lose. You have to stay steady on the rail. Like if you were a, um, look here, we're rallying right now. If you were a horse, like if you were at the Kentucky Derby, I'm gonna look up something here while I'm talking, I'm just gonna take the slide off for a minute. If you were a horse in the Kentucky Derby and you were riding the rail, you have to, and you're trying to get ahead, you're trying to squeeze in, you're on your horse, you want to get in the first place, and you want to ride the rail. you got to stay steady as you go, because if you get knocked out, you're in a bad, bad, bad position, and, and in fact, you could get hurt, you could fall off the horse, and the horse could get hurt too, but you might be able to get out ahead and win the race. I'm looking here just to see if anything else is happening here tonight as we're talking. No. Um, but did, did I make my point there? Did you get what I was saying? So you, if you're, if you're, if you gotta stay steady, 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 okay? 
So for me, it's gaps. That's the system that I use. And it's the rating system. That's what allows me not to panic on days like today if I'm in a long overnight or not uh, for, for a long-term long. And not to also panic and taking new positions short, which, which in my mind would have been, like I said earlier, a 50-50 based on the rating system, okay? And sometimes on days like today, you might want to take a step back and not do anything. But there were short opportunities in the market today. You could have shorted the airlines. And actually, I saw this late, but CCL and RCL, the cruise lines fell off a of planet. You could have shorted the cruise lines. They gapped down and had nice sell-offs. You could have shorted the airlines. They gapped down and had nice sell-offs. And of all the tech, Facebook was the only one that I really liked to the downside today to really have any follow-through. It had follow-through on the day, but even this year, look, it rallied into the close. So trading and making money is fun if you make it very quickly. Quickly in a day trade would be first half an hour of the day, which I try to do. Quickly as an option would be within 24 to 48 hours, in my opinion. Taking something one day and having it gap in your direction the next or having the run up within a 48 hour period. But sometimes you will take a trade and it will be down before you're up and that doesn't mean you give up on it. That doesn't mean you kill it. And it doesn't mean you abandon what you do and what you know. Look at this here, we're rallying tonight. Wow, if, I'm, if I end up being right on this market call, man, I am a genius. I, I, I sat on T, I, people are, don't agree with me. <laughs> I sat on today talking about the fact that there was a possibility we could hold and I wouldn't even be surprised if we had a rally back and made new highs and if the rally back that will be big, bigger than expected and the rally could happen sooner than people think and apps, people thought that I, you know, people just did not believe me. And look at this here. We are getting bought tonight. It's one hour after the close and the market now is over. We're closed. So like if this was 9.30 tomorrow morning, we'd be up. Not a million dollars, but we'd be up. We closed at 322.41 and the SPY is at 322.66. So let's look at the overall market here since we're talking about the market. Now, where did I get that from? Thinking that that would happen. Thinking that it wouldn't even happen at all. Well, from this, for one thing, this is the market. So this is a market back pretty much since the election. Nice rally, beautiful move. Some people were in this market long, some people got in long, some people missed it. Some people missed it. And the people that missed it are anxious to buy in again and could even buy in here. Now, while there is a slight possibility that the market could fall all the way down here to the 200 period moving average, which is a red line, that is such low odds that I don't think that happens. It could, I guess, theoretically in some universe, but I don't think that occurs. That would be such a big dramatic drop for the market to happen. I don't think it does, but some people are probably thinking that it will because people like to talk about disaster. But in the life of the market, of all the time the market exists, and here it is, this is all going all the way back to 1999, 20 years back in the market plus, the market is most of the time, most of the time in the life of the market, the market is strong. Why? Much of the money that's in the market is in 401ks, and much of the money that's in market is in, is in, in pretty much in longs. Okay, retirement money, investment money, it's in longs. And many of the stocks that are in the, the S&P index are strong stocks, market leaders, stocks that you would know of, companies that you've heard of, okay? Now, occasionally you get a little bad guy like the Boeing. I'm just gonna go over here, which I called short on Friday as a one day played. I called the Boeing puts. They worked on the day you could have gotten out. If you held them into Monday, that was a big trade. This, I felt 100% conviction would fall Friday. It did. Again, if you carried it into the weekend, it fell even more. I did not call anything in this today. But every once in a while, you get a bad actor, which right now in the Dow, which again is made up of 30 stocks and Boeing is in it, is Boeing. This chart does not look good. I don't know when the next earnings are on this. In fact, let me look it up. But this doesn't look good here at all. And I'm not saying do a trade in this tonight, and I'm not saying I'm gonna call a trade in it tomorrow, but I'm saying every once in a while you have a bad actor, like something that doesn't act right in the bucket of stocks that's in one specific index. Could be Apple in the queues on any given day, and it could be Boeing in the case of 
the Dow. Now let me just see what the Boeing, there's some kind of conference in next week, April 22nd. Well, that's like two months away. It's got a long, long time. Okay. Anyways, getting back to the whole point of what I was trying to lecture about today, and I wanted to just talk about this in reference to the market because today, for some people, was challenging to read what would occur. One of the things that I do very well is I can read price action in live time, second by second and minute by minute, into the open. And when I read the open of the market today, I felt a high level of conviction it would hold, meaning that it would not sell off. Therefore, that combined with my gap rating, I did not call any puts today in any market instances or any market stocks. Facebook was on its own, and that was it. And then different sectors you could have shorted like the cruise lines and the airlines. But conviction helps you trade. Experience does too. Experience knowing that you're going to have days like this where something happens unexpectedly that you're not aware of. You can try to find a way to capitalize on it if you can without pushing the envelope or you step aside and wait. Wait for better opportunity. Wait for till things are clearer for you. Any questions here so far? Any questions about anything I do? We're rallying here tonight, which is a really good sign for the market. This is a good sign for the market here. I mean, we don't, we didn't have to rally here tonight because I looked up. There's no reason for this. It looks like we're just rallying here a little bit tonight. Greggy said so far so good. So. I've been teaching people since I started the business, my method, which I started the business, I guess, 2013. Started trading in 2008, started the business in 2013. Or 2012. No, 2012 I started the business. Anyways, long story short, one of the most, one of the, one of the biggest difficulties people find when they come and they learn from me is sizing. So I've been doing a series of emails, if you've been on my email list since the last couple of days, to try to focus on beginners. And I'm offering a special for the class. I, before I get through this, I'll tell you the next class dates if you want to learn what I do, because I don't have the PowerPoint up. It's called the Golden Gap Course, and it is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, February 29th and March 1st. And I'm in New York, so it's always my time zone with the times, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. And the class is $6,999. I'm offering the trading room free through the end of this year, which is huge because normally I charge a fee for the room with the class this weekend. You have to take the class to be in the room. If you want a trial for the live room, if you have not done a trial before, then you can email me if you want a trial for the room this week. You can be in the room Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I offer one trial per person. I'm not doing any open houses this week. If you want a trial, email me. I will give you a trial if you're interested in the class. But I'm offering the room free to the end of the year, and that is really invaluable, particularly on days like today to get my market analysis because I'm sure a lot of traders thought the market was lower. Why? We did gap down pretty big in the market. I'm not going to lie. This could have fallen. I had my thinking cap on today. I was up early. I had my coffee. I wanted to make sure I double, triple checked myself and that I didn't make any mistakes, and I, I didn't. Okay, I didn't miss some big sell off into the day in the market. I didn't miss an opportunity to short. It wasn't there. And I didn't rush to buy anything in here because we ended up closing basically neutral. I'm waiting to see where we are tomorrow morning. Now we're slightly up here tonight. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, one of the biggest things since I've been teaching people that people struggle with is sizing. So talking about beginners in the last few days and trying to focus on beginners is important because beginners have difficulty with sizing. Now, what do I mean by sizing? We're going to look at the trade I did today. Oops, why did I say a -N -N? Um, This one here. This is A-A-L. So the short on this, I called it, I called the trades live in the room, was 25.42. Stop was 25.85. Now, I'm going to just type this in the room here. Hold on one second. A-A-L. This was a trade this morning. I'm not saying do this now. It was a short. And these are the numbers I called. 25.42. Stop. 25.85. Now, what is the risk on this? And again, you're doing this quickly. 
This is live time. I'm calling the trade. It's 940 or whatever, okay? The risk is what? 40 cents. So what does that mean? That means you have to know, okay, I risk this much per trade, Mr. Smith or whoever you are. You say, I want to risk $400 a trade. Okay, guess what? You could have taken 1,000 shares of AAL and risked $400. And you would have made what? Around 400 bucks if you got out around the $25 number. Oh, I wrote that wrong. I'm sorry. I put $24.85 for the stock. I meant $25.85. Sorry. Hope, hopefully everyone understood what I just read. I just corrected it there. So stop was here. Entry was here. Your risk is about 40 cents. This is not an exact science. Well, you could have said, well, it was really 43 cents. Yeah, but you don't have time to worry about that. Like a difference of three cents, two cents, one cents, that's not going to kill anyone. You say, okay, four cents. Now, what will kill someone? And this is what I'm trying to say that people have had difficulty with. The most difficulty that people have had coming to learn from me is not learning the system, but learning how to size themselves, which I find which I find surprising. And now, I'm really good at math. I can do math in my head like that. If you're not, you got to get a calculator. you got to get a calculator. you got to buy a calculator if you want to come and trade with me so your sizing is right. Because guess what? What if you didn't want to, what if you ended up taking 4,000 shares, 4,000 shares instead of 1,000? Guess how much you would have risked? 1,600 bucks. And if your normal risk is 400, even if your buying power allowed you to short 4,000 shares of AAL, while this trade worked and while that you would have made $1,600 if you had risked $1,600 in this trade, what if it had stopped? And then you would have lost 1600 and you basically would have lost what would have essentially been like five trades for you normally four plus do you follow me so that is the biggest challenge that people i've found since i've been teaching people since 2012 have had with day trading to me that is very surprising but not everyone is good at math it's the side of certain sides of your brain i don't know what the right side of your brain is on the left side of your brain or like, let me just Google that and find out. Certain sides of your brain are good and better at certain other things. Let's look. What size of your brain? What side of your brain is good with numbers? Whatever that is, mine is good. Left. Small numbers are processed in the right side of the brain, while large numbers are processed in the left side of the brain. Oh, that's interesting. How do you know which side of the brain is dominant? Oh, this is very interesting. Yeah, so again, it has to do with, oh, here it is. How do you know if you're right brain or left brain? If you're mostly analytical and methodical, I would say that I am, and you're thinking you're said to be left brain. If you tend to be more creative or artistic, you're thought to be right brain. Yeah, I would be more left brain then. Yeah, that makes sense. Left brain is connected to mathematics, facts, thinking, logic. Here, this is, this is good. I'll copy and paste this. Yep, I'm apparently a left brain person. So again, I don't know what you are. So say say you're not um, a left brain person like me. Say you're more a creative right brain person. Well, then you need to buy a calculator when you're sizing yourself because it's very, very important. You will have different uh results and vary results if your risk is different from trade to trade because what if you take five trades what if four are, are winning trades and one is a losing trade if the one that loses you size yourself four times the amount even though you took four other trades with your correct size you will be flat you won't be up any money at all Whereas if you took five trades, lost in one, one in four, you would be positive with all equal sizing of risk. The risk is the dollars and the cents, not the share quantity. How do I know? You don't know the share quantity because you don't know the share quantity until I call the trade live in the room, like I said, 42.85 today, and that's the value of being in the live room, okay? Any questions here so far? So that's very interesting. Again, I think it's so important to understand your strengths and weaknesses. 
if you're not a numbers person, if you're not a left brain person like me, it doesn't mean you can't trade. It doesn't mean you can't make money trading, okay? It, it may simply mean that you don't want to do this with every ounce of your breath like me, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. <laughs> it, may, it may mean that you don't live and breathe it and sleep it like me, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it as a side gig for somebody to make money and it still can be fun, okay? But you have to be aware, I think, of your own strengths and your own weaknesses in reference to, to, to basically trading and what you're good at and what you're not good at. Any questions here so far by anyone? Now let me look and see if there's any other news out tonight. I think this was a good discussion today. Again, this was different than what I had originally planned simply because of the fact that we had this volatile move in the market and I think it was worthy of a discussion and people love charts. If you've not done a trial with me, email me. You can come and be in the room this week. And if you are trading and don't have a strategy, then you should, you should take a break until you get one. Now, whether you decide to learn mine or do something else, I think it's really, really important to have a strategic thing that you decide to do every day because days like today can really whip you around if you don't have a specific strategy that you follow to the letter. Otherwise, how are you gonna know what to do? You'll make decisions based on news, you will make decisions on the fly, you will read something or you will watch TV and you will change your mind willy-nilly and therefore then you're not gonna see consistent results. The consistent results mean that you are doing the same thing every day, taking the same risk every day, and you're looking for more winners than losers by following a specific strategy. For me, that's the rating system. And I applied it today in the market and it worked. And I applied it in AAL and it worked. And if I had wanted to do another trade, I could have applied it with this and this CCL would have rated well as two. But by the time I saw this, it was like around lunch and then I just had too many things to do this afternoon and the room was already closed. Any questions here so far? Anything you want to ask me since I'm here and doing a free free for all lecture today? Again, the class for this month for February is February 29th and March 1st. Okay, that's this month's class. The next class will probably be in another month. I usually do a class once a month. But this class includes the trading room free to the end of the year if you sign up by Friday, which is important. It has been a very good year. It's been a, an unusually good year for the options newsletter. I have not had time to do a deeper uh, analysis on Tesla. Um, I've been so busy on weekends, I honestly like just wanna rest. But one of the reasons that the newsletter was has been such a big winner this year is because I've caught a lot of great trades in Tesla. We've caught this at the right time. But the option strains I call uses the same strategy. The newsletter is separate and it's not the same thing as the room, but the strategy is the same. The day trades, we have are finally starting today going to see some nice follow through with day trade shorts because the market was in a placement of uncertainty and stocks were kind of like weak things were hanging on and strong things weren't following through. With this shakeout today in the market, I think things are going to get back to normal for both directional biases, stocks to the upside and stocks to the downside, depending on what gaps and what looks rates well. Anyways, there was one more thing I was trying to say earlier when I was talking about the market and then I changed thoughts. Um, as someone that's in the market on a consistent basis daily, like watching the minutia and particularly something when I watch the open because I'm really good at reading the open, I mean, 99% of the time I can tell where stocks can go in the day by reading the first five minutes of the day and that is a skill set. You will learn about that in the class, but it really is a skill set of doing it and because I've been doing it for 12 years. But being someone in the market every day, reading the minutia, reading the open every day of every gap, including the market, the market's been very strong. So the market, like being in the market all of 2020, 
day after day after day is also, this has nothing to do with the system, but the system has taught me the skills, if you follow what I'm saying. Like I've gained the intuition and the skill set I have because I've been applying this system for 12 years. So you gain a skill set and an intuition when you train doing the same thing for a long, long time that pinpoints you in the right direction of what you should be looking at, which is what you basically learn in the class. I teach you in the class what to look for. That's what, that's what I teach you. You may not know because you don't know what to be focusing on, but that's what I teach in the class. That's the reason that you'd pay me the $7,000. But the reality is that I've been in the market now this year, 2020, and it's just been so strong. It's like, it's so hard for me to describe it in words, but I'm going to do the best that I can. And I've talked about this in the room this morning and I talked about it even in the room last week. Like nothing is heavy. Again, I'm trying to use words to describe what I mean, but like nothing is heavy. When nothing is heavy and everything is so strong, you know that that longs, okay? Because that's the only thing that holds the market up. You have longs that hold the market up. The market would... The market wouldn't have done this move that it did the last few years, the last few months, the last few weeks, if there weren't longs in the market. So it's money that comes in and buys the market, longs, call them longs, call them bulls, call them whatever you want. That is holding firmly. That's the strength that I feel. I mean, they're not letting go of it. Like say you were a person and you owned a hedge fund or just were a person and you had millions and millions and millions of dollars invested in the market you are not letting your long positions go. That's the best way like I could describe it as I feel it as in the market day to day. Like the market is so strong that the bulls aren't letting their longs go. And today is a good example of that because you did not see follow through today to the downside. While we did gap down and there were some people that sold from Friday into Monday and a lot of them were retail traders that shorted the market I think Friday into the, clo into the close and then into Monday. You, you, don't, you didn't see people giving it up. This is the best way I can describe it. Now, again, where we go from here, I won't know till tomorrow. But the way we're trading here tonight is a good sign for this to hold as well. Because, like, we're not selling off here in the after hours. We're trying to hold. But anyways, it, it, the market feels so strong and not heavy. And when something is heavy, let me feel think of what some well this I mean again this here I mean this is like nothing is this is like a goner this is CCL I mean it, this is probably even lower tomorrow I'm not saying I'd short this again tomorrow but I mean nobody wants to buy this everyone knows there's issues on the fundamental side chart looks like crap this is CCL See that? Like, this is very heavy. Like, like that's, a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to describe it in the best way that I can. But it's the opposite feeling. The opposite feeling that I'm getting in the market. I could change my mind tomorrow, but I don't think I will. Because when I'm, when I'm feeling it for so many days and so many weeks, it would almost have to come in like a bat out of hell for me to change my mind which it absolutely could have today, but it didn't, but it didn't, so. Any questions from anyone about anything? So if you're a beginner, you absolutely should have a strategy to trade and you should start out trading on a demo to practice your size and make sure that you know what you're doing. If you've been trading for a while, you still should be focusing on one strategy to trade. If you don't have one, you need to get one, whether you learn mine or somebody else's. Buying support and shorting resistance is not a strategy. I, and same thing with the moving averages. And I repeat myself over and over again because people always want to buy pullbacks and they don't consistently work. And I didn't make that call today. We were sitting on support today in the queues. And Microsoft as well. And I didn't call longs here in these things today. I might tomorrow. I don't know. But I did not today. And we were on support. And we're strong. The market was strong. Queues were strong. Even though we gapped down. Okay. If you're trading and you are losing or lost in 2019, then stop doing what you're doing. I mean, it's like, do you really want to lose all of 2020? 
I know it's so challenging for people to change what they're doing if they're in a habit of doing something, even if they're losing. They feel so comfortable doing whatever they're doing, even if they're losing. They want to believe so badly whatever they're doing because they know it so well is going to work, but yet they keep losing. I'm not talking that they lose every day. I'm talking over the course of weeks and months and years they're losing, and over an entire year they're losing. If you're doing something where you lost, either you're making a sizing mistake literally every day or what you're doing full on flat out does not work. And you have to be honest with yourself about it. I don't think there's anything wrong with change. Change is good. Sometimes the change that you make in your trading must be drastic in order for you to turn it around. Drastic meaning learn something completely new. Spend $7,000 for a class like mine. Something drastic has to change when you're in a slump and you're losing, losing, losing. Okay? The class is an investment and you understanding what to do and it's a good deal this week because of the fact you get the room free at the end of the year. But change is not a bad thing. It can be a good thing. And if the where you're at right now with your trading, you're not 100% satisfied, then change is a good thing because it means that you have the possibility to making whatever you're living with your trading life better, happier. Change it. Make it different. Make it good if it's bad. Don't keep letting it be the same and be bad where you're losing. That's very problematic and you're going to be stuck. And, and trust me when I say, if you don't change what you're doing, even, you know, even if you don't think it all is that bad, it can always get worse if you're not doing well. If you lost 40 grand last year, this year you could lose 80 if you don't know what you're doing. Okay? I've heard a lot of horror stories. Any questions from anyone about anything? If you're interested in the trial, again, if you've not done a trial and you're interested in the class this weekend, Email me at melissathestockswish.com. If you can't do a trial and you're just interested in the class, email me. I don't know what TV spots I have tomorrow. We'll see what the market does. I don't know where the market goes tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. Today was an exercise in my own uh, good judgment for myself, and I made a good judgment. I did not jump in shorting the market in the world. I can go to sleep tonight feeling confident that I'm going to wait and make a decision tomorrow. And... That is the best thing that I could have done. And I was very steady on the rail today. And the trades worked, that's what I called today. There was only two, but they worked. And you really only need one. So and one option trade and one day trade a day can keep you fat and happy. Any questions from anyone about anything? If not, thank you, Kathy, for having me. Gustavo, if you have any questions, I know you've been emailing me, let me know. HJW, you've been following me for a while. I don't know if you're finally ready to do the class this weekend and join. Hopefully you, you will. Mary, I don't know if I've seen you before. Your name looks new. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, Mary looks new. Good luck, everyone. Have a great night. Go to sleep and get up early, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. Okie doke. Thank you. That is good advice. Uh, everyone, I want to thank you for coming out. To online trader central tonight i will go out on this limb here that i don't often go out and say that most customers love her they're making money in that room and i don't say that lightly um there's times that they're chomping at the bit to get in there so i know because i have to support them getting in there uh i do say that if you've not taken the trial you should email her melissa at the stockswish.com so you can see how this all plays out in real time and I wish you all a great night ahead, and like she said, good luck out there. Everyone, Melissa at thestockswish.com. Melissa, thank